hope everybody's doing okay. Um, so, several months ago, I started to uh, just get interested, and it all pretty much started making my wife a little spoon for the kitchen. And um, it kind of changed a lot in my life because it's always running and gunning like I know a lot of us are. And uh, finally, it just kind of toned life down a little bit for me. I started sitting around and actually taking more, getting my mind to rest. And I started to understand why the old guys, uh, which I guess I'm one of them, used to sit around and whittle. I used to sit around and just carve a little bit. It, it don't have to be anything fancy. It, it don't have to be anything, you know, that uh, uh, sell for a hundred dollars. I mean, most of these little spoons and stuff I make now, I give away uh, just because it's a blessing to me to be able to sit down and work on them. But uh, it, as much as I enjoyed watching little YouTube videos about um, how to whittle and different things about whittling. Um, there was a lot of things that I just had to learn on my own. Uh, I'm gonna take just a few minutes and kind of go over just a few things that to me, uh, I've, I've seen a lot of reviews on knives and I've seen a lot of reviews on different things about whittling, but to me, I'll, I'll be honest with you, a lot of it just didn't help me. Uh, a lot of it, I just had to kind of sit back and do on my own. It seemed like everybody kind of did the same thing so this is my version of trying to help so we'll kind of see how it goes so anybody that has any advice for me or anything just i mean just let me know and i'll, I'll try to do a little bit better so uh it's pretty obvious that you know you, you don't have to have the knives that i have here i mean i i'm i've, I've tried different types of knives uh, i've tried cheaper versions of knives i've even made a few of my own uh, just basically with a little stick and an old blade or something and and they were okay But I'm gonna tell you the the thing that I enjoyed the most was been able to have just a pocket knife in my pocket and Anytime I felt like going outside and picking up a stick and just trying to carve out a spoon then um, That's that's what I wanted to do. I mean, it, it was just easier um, I was always walking around from inside my house to outside my house and here i had this uh these knives sticking out everywhere and i, I was just always concerned i'm like man one of these days i'm gonna trip you know and i'm gonna wind up uh, getting hurt so uh plus there's a lot of times that i just wanted to take them with me a lot of the times that i wanted to sit outside for a little bit and maybe i wanted to go to the basement maybe i wanted to put it in my car and wait a little bit on my break time or on my lunch time at work so I started carrying around little pocket knives and, and at first I, I just found the cheapest knives that I could find and uh, I, I just did that. I mean, I, I just I just used them. But what I did find out was that I was all the time sharpening them. Every time you turn around, I was sharpening the knife. So uh, then uh, I invested a little bit more and I bought a little bit more expensive knife and I realized that there was a huge difference um, in the different types of materials that blades are made out of. Now, I'm not gonna argue what's better than the other. This is just my personal preference. Uh, I tried from Case the, the Chrome Vanadium and, and they're okay, but the only problem was is that sometimes, especially in humidity, if you're getting, you put the little pocket knife in your pocket and it's high humidity, uh, it gets moisture to it. and sometimes that tends to rust and you just have to upkeep with them more uh, but these little blades here the ones that i've got um this is kind of what i started getting partial to this is this is one of the first ones a friend of mine actually gave me this one uh this this right here is is a case it's a medium stockman it's a stockman bin just because it has the three blades and the way that it's shaped uh, it has that uh that little blade right there is a sheep's foot then it has a, a clip blade right there, and then it has a, um, uh, I can't think of the name of that blade at the moment, but uh, it has a little spade blade, that's what it's called. Um, so it was pretty handy at first. Um, I started using this little knife right here, and it, it stayed very sharp for a long time. Uh, it started, it was doing fine. I didn't have any problem with the blades, but what I did run into that I didn't expect 
was the more that I was doing th this blade right here, you can see it kind of up against my thumb. That's pretty small on your thumb. Okay, so when you're sitting there and you're doing most of your cuts, which I'll close this back up and I'm kind of doing this one-handed, so just be patient with me. So when you're holding your knife, most of the time you're holding it just like this and you're gripping it, not real tight, but pretty good. And you put your thumb right there most of the time. Most of the time you're either doing this type of grip right here when you're doing a push cut, or sometimes you're turning around and you're holding it to you like this. Well, you can see how small that little blade is on the backside. So when you're doing a lot of it, it pushes and bruises against your thumb. Uh, it, it just, it, it doesn't, if you're doing it just for a little bit, it's kind of fun and, and it's okay, you can bear with it. But me personally, the more that I did, the more that I whittled, the more that I started carving, the tougher it became to uh, bear. I mean, I got to the point where my thumb was just sore. Uh, it, it's, it's a pleasure to carry the knife. I, I've enjoyed them. Uh, like I said, I mean, a lot of people, uh, I, I, I've sharpened them and I, I don't know how many spoons I've done on each one of these different knives. Uh, this one here, I probably haven't done as much as the rest of them, but, um, that little knife there, I, I'm, I'm sure I've done at least three or four spoons on it since I've had it. And it's still in fairly good shape because I, I didn't want to use it all the time. But uh, then after I started um, swapping around, and it's kind of a uh, dangerous hobby to get into, I started trying other knives. I tried just trying different designs. I had several of them of that one right there. And uh, that one, by the way, the model of it, it's a Case X, and it's... Um, this one's a 6.5318, and the 6.5 means that that bone right there is uh, is made to look like stag bone, but, it, but or stag, but it's 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 not really. It's just bone, but it's made to look like it. And then um, the three is the number of the blades, and then your um, one eight is actually the pattern numbers, the the pattern number of the knife. But wonderful little knife, and like I said, I I really enjoyed and I still use it from time to time. It's just, and, and I never really had a problem, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, another thing that a lot of people will talk about is a blade wobble. So when that blade's out and the more you use it, I'm sure if I used it for years to come, it would eventually develop. But I mean, in the last several months that I've used it, and you can tell, I mean, I've got several, several different spoons that I've made. Uh, it wasn't very much. So uh, what I went to next, um was case trapper um and like i said case is just the brand that i started going with because um they, they are a little bit more expensive but they seem to hold up a little better they they seem to when i sharpened them they stayed sharp a little bit longer now like i said i'm not going to get into debate and which metals what but i started to just really enjoy it and like i said it was a blessing to me that j just to sit around i, I wasn't looking for something to, to become the best carver ever. I wasn't looking for uh, just the tool that most people, because most of the people that do any type of carving that you're gonna find on YouTube or that I did, most of them buy these expensive knives and they, they have all this fancy knives that are dedicated just for carving. And I mean, if you're like me, then, then I wanted yes to be carving with it, but at the same time, it'd be nice to have one in your pocket just to carry around just to peel an apple if you were hungry, peel a pear, um, cut rope if you had to, uh, sit around in your garden and cut the little strings when you're tying your tomato plants up. I mean, to me, it was gonna be a user knife. It wasn't, um, I, I enjoy sitting them back and don't, like this one right here, I mean, it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but I wanted something that, that had more than just a carving to it, more than just sitting around on a shelf. And, and like I said, I've got a couple of those, but this right here, uh, it, it just meant more to me, you know. Uh, my grandfather used to used to collect these, and um, my dad used to carry a poppy, pocket knife around with him all the time. So um, it, it's just, I guess it's an age that anymore, everybody that has a pocket knife, they they all they can think about is defending themselves with it. And the truth is, there's a whole lot more to a pocket knife than just to defend yourself. Okay. Um, but anyway, this right here uh, was the trapper. This was the next knife that I started using to carve with and I started to whittle with. And um, the reason I started to use it 
was because of the size. Uh, now it's, you can see it in my hand. I mean, it's, it's pretty good size knife. I mean, it's about four, four inches quarter long blades, about three inches long. Um, the biggest thing is look at the backside of those blades. You see those blades right there? They're wider. And I, I don't know if you can tell, but they're quite a bit wider than the other blade that we had. And what that did was, is that made the knife more comfortable. Now, there's two different blades on here. There's a spade blade and it's kind of long. And then there's this clip point blade. So I'm gonna close down the spade blade just for a little bit. And I'm gonna open up that, that other one. So when you're holding your knife in your hand, this is wider, it's a little bit wider, but it's, it's amazing how good it feels in your hand, okay? And a lot of people are worried because, well, they'll fold up on you and well, as long as you're pushing forward with it all the time. So if you're gonna bring it back to you, if you turn your blade this way, or if you're gonna go forward, you push on it. As long as you're doing that type of motion, you won't have to worry about this knife closes on you. Um, one thing that I did run into though, that I didn't expect, even as comfortable as this knife was to um, put my thumb on the backside of it, you can see that that's, that's a whole lot better. That that size right there it may not seem much but it makes it a little more comfortable and the only problem with this was is that you can tell from the size of the blade that this pretty good size blade okay and over here we were dealing with let me see if i can open this up again real quick uh give me just a minute there we go so uh this blade here you're dealing with so look quite a bit shorter so it's a little bit easier to maneuver i mean when you when you look at uh something as simple as is one of these little spoons i mean you hold that up next to it you don't really need that big huge long blade okay you really don't need a, a blade that's that long um is it possible to use yes it is uh is is it comfortable to use yes it is but I mean, I, I've got a little bit, I guess, uh, average, to me they're average hands, but I guess to everybody their own hands are average. But th this has got an average size hand. My hands are average size, okay? I'm about six foot tall. So my hands are about average. They're, I mean, you can tell right there, that's, that's four inches long from the edge of that bolster to the edge of that bolster, about four and a quarter. So they, my hands are pretty good size. But you really don't need that, that blade that long. And I started running into that block. And uh, I, I didn't get rid of it. I, I loved using this knife. Um, same thing kind of happened to me with the spade blade, that other blade right there longer. You can tell how wide and how thick both those blades are. And they're super comfortable to use. Uh, that right there is a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful pocket knife that, that I, I've really enjoyed. I mean, I, I'm, I can tell you that Case to me, um, they they just make a really good knife they when they made knives years ago i mean they intended for people to use them they a lot of times they make them beautiful and yes i know a lot of people collect them but but these these not only can you collect but uh can you buy one cheaper sure you can go out here and buy one for you know uh ten dollars anymore and order it online but that knife right there may cost you 40 to 50 dollars uh, if you can find someone you you know use somewhere but the truth is it'll last you for a long time uh, they're very well made and i've actually had a knife that i sent back to case and they um the, the bone was busted on it they sent it right back to me and said yeah depending on the year that it was it was covered under the warranty and they sent it back to me and it's in great shape and i actually i i, I wound up uh, selling it to a, a friend of mine because he was looking for one but i trade them often times um but that right there is a trapper and that right there uh, you're looking the, the number on that one the model number would be uh six two um five four and that's a uh, six would be the material that's a bone and then uh, two is two blades and five four is the actual model number um wonderful knife like i said perfect for whittling can i keep good whittling with that yes i could I could keep doing that. But, you know, us guys, I mean, we're always trying to improve things. We're always trying to do better. Um, we're always trying to find a way to make things a little bit easier. So, uh, what it led to me was this one right here. Uh, this knife here is a, uh, a case 
um, double X again, but it's a jumbo Stockman's what it is. And the jumbo Stockman, you can tell, I mean, I'll try my best if I can try not to cut myself. You, you can tell, I mean, that's, that's a big knife. I mean, that's a handful of knife right there. So to everybody that, that may not be what you're after. Okay. It, the size of the spade blade, um, we hold it up next to this other one. It's, it's big, but if you look here close enough, it's a big spade blade, but really it's not much bigger than that other one, but it's wide. Um, that means that's got years and years that I could sharpen on that thing and keep on using it. Uh, plus I'm telling you that these right here, if you take your time and that's probably the hardest thing for people to do. And I had to learn it when you're sharpening your knives is take your time. Don't get in a big hurry. Take you just a regular stone and little by little, try to get the, the softest stone you can as far as the, almost like a sandpaper feel to it. Get one that's kind of smooth and just take your time with it. Okay. So this right here wind up being the one Now, at times you can tell that that blade on this end, go to this side first. So the spade blade, it's kind of a uh, in between. It's not really as wide as the trapper was, but at the same time, it's not really thin either like that little Stockman was. So this jumbo Stockman's got pretty good sized blades on it, okay? But it, it makes it very comfortable. Now, the blade that I wind up just amazed me, and this right here has sold me on this knife right here. Th this is probably gonna be the one, I've got two of these, not, not this same style, but I've got two of this same model. And these are the ones that I'm probably gonna be using the most for a long time, because they, they just, they fit in my hand perfect. Uh, they're very comfortable. Uh, even with the, the, the corners are a little bit, uh, they're, they're kind of squared off at the top. So at times I have to change just the way I'm holding it. But, but you can tell here that the back part of that blade is, is just wide. Uh, but the main thing is, is that look how, look at the size. So you compare those two together, it still has that shorter blade. So when I get ready to carve, I mean, that right there is almost like a utility blade. That's how wide that is. You can see kind of up against my thumb. It's, it's a very wide blade. So this blade right here wind up being the one that I, I, I've used the most. Um, and like I said, I mean, I've got them pretty much to where they're like razor sharp. I mean, I know a lot of people on there, they, they turn around, they use paper and everything else to cut with them. And I, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to do that. I don't really, I mean, it's sharp. And, um, I know that a lot of times people may like that kind of thing, but, but the truth is, look, I mean, you can kind of see the, the spoons that I've got here. Um, I, I've kind of little by little learned more and more on how to shape and how to do things. And just to be honest with you, most of us probably what we need to do is we need to practice our technique and there's plenty of videos out there to do that, uh, that that'll teach you how to different techniques, different pull cuts, different push cuts, um, different little cross cuts that you do, all kinds of little designs. And I, I don't know what you'll eventually wind up wanting to do, but this one right here, uh, this knife here is, is, a, is a jumbo Stockman's what it's called. It, it's got a big old clip point. I'll see if I can get that clip point out of there just a minute here um i mean it's it's like i said it's not a small blade i mean there, there's that clip point blade on that it's it's not a small blade i'll hold it up against uh this trapper right here and you can tell that 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 blade's almost as long as that trapper is i mean that's it's it's a pretty good size blade it's wide blade you can see it up against that there it, it's a very wide blade a lot of times you'll see a lot of people then they think well this right here is the blade i want for carbon this blade here is the one I use for whittling. That, that's the mistake that I made. Um, you, you may want to do that. You may want to turn around and you may want to, um, you may want to use that bigger blade. But I'm telling you, the more I carve, the more I whittle, I like this design right here. <coughs> that sheep foot's design is just the perfect size. <coughs> Sorry, it's kind of dry out here. Um, it's the perfect design. It, it, it's really comfortable in the hand. And like I said, the case knives to me, I've used them and used them and used them. And I haven't had any trouble out of them. Um, you, you can, I, I personally, like I've said before, I like the idea of being able to have it with me, put it in my pocket, 
this one i do have a sheet that i have for it but i've i've used it in my pocket before and i know a lot of people there's so much of that anymore that well i don't want to it's just too big i don't want to this don't want to that and that's fine it's whatever you want to do but um this is just something that came to mind and i, I wanted to make this little video just just to kind of maybe help the next person out there that that was looking for stuff wanting to learn how to just whittle and carve and it, this is just three little options of different types of knives that you can use um like i said to me case is just the best little pocket knife there is you don't have to have these you can use the cheapest little knife out there if that's what you want to do if if that's all you can afford is is it the cheapest little five ten dollar knife then that's fine but but just remember one thing that that a dull knife will cut you a whole lot quicker than a knife that you can get not necessarily razor sharp but pretty sharp because if you go to push cut and your your knife is just skipping across then there's a chance you're going to miss a stroke and you're going to wind up cutting yourself just so just be very careful um you're better off getting something that, that's going to last that, that's that's going to get sharp and the first thing you need to do with a pocket knife if you're going to start whittling is learn how to sharpen it buy the cheapest knife you can out there sit down and just take a stone watch as many little videos and tutorials as you can take your time sharpening it don't need to get in a big hurry be patient with yourself. That's probably the one thing I've learned about whittling and carving more than anything is just be patient. Be patient and take your time. So anyway, I, I hope this helps somebody. Uh, I'm uh, just going to try my best to do it. So I'm going to, uh, hopefully this will help somebody though and you'll be able to uh, go out and enjoy and just pick up a stick and you never know. You might make something that'll uh, bless somebody else. Have a good day.